How are we as Christians called to respond when someone harms us, when someone sins against us, right, and causes us pain? Um, it's hard to know what to do, but our Lord tells us this Sunday in the Gospel um, from the Sermon on the Mount to turn the other cheek. Uh, and we can easily misunderstand that to mean, um, oh, just ignore it, right? Uh, lie down and take it, right? But as Christians, we're not called to be wimps, and we're not called to be doormats, and we're certainly not called to, to stay in, a, in an abusive or harmful relationship, right? Or to pretend that someone's sin against us didn't happen. So what does that mean, to turn the other cheek? Um, well, we get some really good guidance in the first reading from Mass this Sunday from Leviticus, where we're told not to um, you know, allow that sort of situation, not to allow someone's sin against us to lead us into sin, to be an occasion for us to incur sin ourselves. Um, and this is why we're not supposed to take revenge. Uh, this is why we're not supposed to, to harbor anger or, or a grudge in our heart towards someone. Because when we do those things, we're, we're letting someone else's sin against us be an excuse for us to sin against them. You know, when someone sins against us, that, that may cause us pain, it may cause us suffering, but really they're harming themselves more than they're harming us because they, they have that spiritual guilt of that sin on their soul. Um, and if we choose then to, to use that as an excuse or an occasion for us to do something sinful back to them in revenge, well, that's on us. We incur the guilt for that sin, and that's when the real harm takes place. We can't allow that to happen. We have to be on guard against that. Um, and I'll give you a, a, a really powerful um, example of this, I, I feel. I knew a woman years and years and years ago who had been abandoned by her husband. And so he had really wronged her. He had really done an injustice to her and that caused her great pain and suffering. And as I got to know her and know more about the situation, I mean, it was, it was so stereotypical. The, the husband had a midlife crisis. Um, he ran off to Florida with his secretary from work, who was a woman half his age. Uh, I think he even ended up buying a red sports, sports car. Or, you know, it was like a plot to a bad movie, except it was real life and it was really happening to this poor woman and, and causing her a lot of pain. And as I was getting to know her, that had happened years ago, um, but she had never remarried. She had never uh, pursued any other romantic relationships because she considered herself still married. She even wore her wedding ring still. And the way that she described it to me, she said, I am married. Um, I have a husband. My husband lives in Florida with another woman and he's a real jerk, right? And he's not good to me, but he's still my husband. And I'm not going to allow the fact that he chose to be unfaithful, to be an excuse for me to be unfaithful. He may have chosen to break his marriage vows, but I'm choosing to keep mine because I meant them. And I thought, whoa, like what a powerful witness. What a cross to bear on her part, but what a powerful witness, not only for the sanctity of marriage, but also that capacity that we have to love even those who have wronged us. And, and that the fortitude that this woman exhibited in refusing to, to enter into sin because someone else had sinned against her. And, and this is what our Lord is calling us to. When he says, you know, you've heard it said to, to love those who love you. Well, that's easy. He says, even the pagans love those who love them. As Christians, I'm calling you to love even your enemies. Love your enemies. Love those who have harmed you. Right? If we learn to do that, then we learn to love how God loves, right? And, and how do we do that, right? It's, love is a choice. And this really emphasizes that fact that love is an act of the will. It's not an emotion, right? Because even though we may feel a lot of pain when someone hurts us, that pain doesn't mean we can't choose to forgive them. And choosing to forgive them does not mean, again, ignoring what they've done. It doesn't mean that we have to be best friends with that person uh, anymore. It doesn't mean we have to just blindly trust them because we've forgiven them. No, our Lord calls us to be prudent too. Prudence is a virtue. You know, that person may have proven themselves not to be trustworthy, so we shouldn't trust them. But that doesn't mean we have to hate them. It doesn't mean we have to um, act against them. We can still make that choice to love them and act for their good, even if the only way that we can express that love for them is to pray for them. Right? We're called to do that. If we do that, if we love even those who are our enemies, who have made themselves our enemies by, by their sin against us, then guess what? We're loving like God because God loves us 
even when we were still his enemies, he loved us enough to die for us. And even when we are unfaithful to him, which we are every time we sin, we're unfaithful to God. We're violating our marriage vows to God that we made at our baptism. All right, every time we're unfaithful to him, he still remains faithful to us. That's why that, that my friend that who remained faithful to her husband, even though her husband was a real, you know, a real jerk, um, was such a powerful witness to me because in that moment I thought, wow, that's how God loves me, right? That's how God loves each one of us. Despite our sins against him, despite our unfaithfulness, he still loves us. And that's how he's calling us to love one another in return. And that way we can be his witnesses. Praise be Jesus Christ.